Hello everyone, welcome to Coders Camp. So we are today at the fifth day of May Lead Code Challenge and the problem we are going to cover is Jump Game 2. The input given here is an integer array nums and we have to return the minimum number of jumps need to land at the last position of the given array. So let's understand this problem with an example. So here is our given input array nums and we have to return the minimum number of jumps needed to reach the last position. So in this case, it is said that this is the maximum number of jump you can take at any position. So from position or index 0, the maximum number of jumps you can make is 2. That is from 0th index to 2nd index. Also, you can make a jump to position 1. That is, you can make maximum of 2, either 1 or 2. So consider we are making 2 jumps from position 1. In that case, we will be reaching the index 2. So from index 2, you can make maximum of 1 jump and if you are jumping, then you move to index 3. From index 3, again, you can make only 1 jump. So if you do that, you can reach the last position. So, so far, you did 3 jumps. If suppose you are not taking two jumps at the first position and trying to take only one jump, then you will be reaching index 1. And from index 1, you can make three jumps so that you actually reach the last position in your second jump. So this required two jumps to reach the last position. That is the minimum number of jumps you can make to reach the last position. And that is going to be our output. So how are we going to approach this? So you can find dynamic programming or BST solutions for the same problem, but they all going to take big O of n square time complexity. And the more optimal solution for this problem is greedy approach. So that is going to take big O of n time complexity. So the concept here is we are going to consider, we are going to take the farthest step at each position greedily and achieve our result. So to do that, so we are going to maintain three variables. The first one is jumps, which is the actual number of jumps we are taking to reach the last position. And that is going to be our result. And the second one is the farthest index. And this is going to keep track of the position, which is the farthest we could make so far in the iterations. And the third variable is current position, which is going to help us keep track of the current position of our jump or where we are at. So let's start iterating from the given array. So now i is at 0, that is our first position. So what is the maximum or the farthest index you can reach from this position? So here, if you are taking two, two jumps, you can actually make it to the second position. So that is the farthest so far you can make being at the index 0. So let's update our variables now. So the farthest index you can make is going to be 2. And your current position is right now at 0th index and the jump so far is also 0th index. So consider you are making this jump to index 2. In that case, our jump is going to be 1. And our current position is going to become 2 as you can reach that position from index 0. So now once you jump, your current position becomes at index 2. So this is your current position. But in between, you are missing out the value 3 or whatever values in between once you made the jump. So there can be the number of jumps you can make in between. That is, you can make 3 jumps, but you quit that step. So what if you can make a jump at that position as well? So that is why our i is there. So once our iteration completes at index 0, our i is going to move to index 1 to consider that jumps as well. So once it is moving to the index 1, we are going to check what is the farthest jump it can make or what is the farthest index it can reach. So from index 1, you can make 3 jumps. In that case, we are going to make a jump to our last position 4. So now our farthest index is going to become 4 and we have made one more jump and our current position is also going to make 4. So our code doesn't know this is the last index because our problem statement said we are definitely going to reach our last index always. So in that case, at our farthest index variable, the maximum 
index or the farthest index it can reach is going to be our last position. So in that case, once our iteration completes, what is the jumps left here in this variable is our output. We are not going to check whether we reach the last position or not because anyway we are going to reach by the problem statement. These things are updated. Our iteration moves to index 2 and from index 2 you can make only one jump and that will take you to the index 3. But here the farthest index you can reach is already 4. So reaching 3 is not a matter. So again our iteration moves to the next index without updating any variable as we have already reached the farthest index. So now our index i is at position 3 and the farthest jump it can make is 1. So that is going to be the position 4. So if you see already we have the answer or updated the position 4. So it is again doesn't going to be matter. And we are not going to consider the value at the last position because we actually have to move to the last position. So whatever jumps we can make from the last position doesn't count. So, so far our iteration is completed and two jumps we have made so far and that is what our output. So here clearly we are going to check every time what is the farthest index we can reach and update the values accordingly so that we'll arrive at our solution. So hope you're understanding the solution. This is going to work in big go of n time. So let's go to code now. So yes, as I said, we are going to have three variables, jumps, current position, and farthest index. So we are going to iterate a given array starting from index 0. So inside this, we are going to update our farthest index. That is, what is the farthest index it can make so far? So here, we are going to update it by using math.max function. i plus nums of i. So this is nothing but the index, current index plus the value at that index. So once it is calculated, we are going to check if our i is our current position because if we are at the i then only we can make a jump if not we have moved somewhere our current position is different and our i is checking something else in that case we cannot jump so we are checking whether our i is our current position in that case we are going to make a jump so my trading jump and then i am now assigning my current position is equal to the farthest index because once we made a jump to the farthest index then that becomes our current position so once we assign the current position by keeping that it is again going to update the farthest index it can reach from the current position and update it accordingly and jump when we are actually at the ith index so finally return the number of jumps So yes, that's it. Let's run and try. Let's submit. Yes, the solution is accepted and runs in 0 milliseconds. So thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, hit like, subscribe and let me know in comments. Thank you.